Step into the incredible, amazing future as we go exploring tomorrow. And now, here is your guide to these adventures of the mind, John Campbell, Jr. Hate and love are really quite close to each other. Usually, hate stems from a misunderstanding of something which properly understood would make love. One of the concepts that many people don't see, miss, uh, just get all wrong, is the fact that there is superiority. And there is inferiority. But those things are specialized and narrowed into special areas. If you don't recognize them, the system won't work at all. If you do recognize them, well, you know, each must then recognize two things. That he is superior and that he's inferior. This is a story of a man who hadn't learned hadn't found out the importance of special superiority and special inferiority. Phil, are you ready for a drink? My name is not Philip. My name is Senga. What? Nothing. You'd better drink this. Thanks. To our last night on Earth for some time to come. Or better yet, to this house where I was born. To the green mountains and jungles we've loved and hunted in. To all this we leave behind. I was looking at her. Yes, she's beautiful. The brightest planet of them all. She's dark and she's ugly. Not from this distance. From here, no. But she's ugly. The ancients didn't think so when they named her Venus. They never got there. No. But you did. You've been there. So will you. Tomorrow you'll be on your way. We both will. Sen, you've never talked much about the place. I told you it's hot. Very hot. Animals? A great many. But I saw only a few. You mostly only hear them. Once I wanted to go hunting, your father said no. He couldn't forget I was Indian. You and I have hunted here, so don't talk rot. Your father never approved. All right, he picked me up in the mountains here when I was four years old. He brought me to this house. Now I am 32 with 28 years of education and civilization behind me, but I am still Indian. All right, Guido. Tell me I have a complex. No, no, no. But ever since you came back from Venus, you've had a chip on your shoulder. Now, come on, fella. You and I grew up like brothers. There's no difference between us. Isn't there? And you're a first-rate space pilot, as good as my father was. As good as you, too? Just as good. After all, you brought the ship back to Earth alone. Almost alone, anyway. You had my father's body with you. He was a great man, Sen. The greatest space explorer of this age. Yes. He was a great man. At least it was you who shared his last minutes. You he chose to go with him on that trip. He thought quite a lot of you. It was not a matter of choice that he took me along. What do you mean by that? Nothing. I've said more than I intended. I have a right to know, Phil. Yes, yes. When we get there, let's call it a night. We blast off at dawn. We need sleep. Green light. Blast off. Coffee? Thanks, I can use a cup. A quarter of a million miles out in space before morning coffee. Not bad, eh? Phil. Yes? My father was not the first man to land on Venus. But no one else, so far as we know, found diamonds there. No one else ever went to the right area. Besides, you use the word diamond in the plural sense. The singular would be more correct. The peak of this mountain is one solid diamond. Pushed up there from the interior by volcanic action. A slab of diamond that must weigh 7,000 tons. If it's true, then diamonds back home will become absolutely worthless. Not immediately. 
And what happens later will not concern us. Why didn't you bring back a sample? There were many reasons. You'll understand when you get there. There's a lot you haven't told me. A great deal, yes, but it can wait. Let's play some chess. Exploring Tomorrow continues in just a moment. All of us, as American citizens, believe in our inherent liberties and freedoms, such as the freedom of association, assembly, and action. But if you will read the First Amendment to the Constitution, you will notice that it is worded, Congress shall make no law abridging the right of the people peaceably to assemble. Whatever the association, assembly, or action, it must be accomplished peaceably. We are given the right to petition, for example, but that right cannot be used to bring malice upon others. We must assume the responsibility for the purposes and actions of associations and assemblies. And if we accept that responsibility, we ensure our freedom. When a kid grows up at a certain period of life, he stops being a child, and yet he is not yet a man. Uh, he's an adolescent, somewhere in between. This is one of the most critical areas of development. This is where we have our juvenile delinquents starting, becoming what they are. The juvenile delinquent is an adolescent gone wrong and misunderstanding. An adolescent is in the problem of inferiority and superiority. He's inferior to his parents. And it's a general inferiority because the parents have greater experience, greater understanding, greater wisdom, simply by the sheer accumulation of understanding of problems they've had to solve and experience themselves. We have to walk about a quarter of a mile through the jungle, then we start to climb. What? What's the matter? Maybe hallucination. You saw something? No, someone. Oh, a man, half naked, a savage. You saw him too. Yes, I glimpsed him. <laughs> there are people here. That's right. You told the newspapers you saw no sign of people. I didn't feel like telling the newspapers all I saw any more than your father did after his first trip here. Oh, yes, Guido. He knew about these people. He never told anyone. They're human like us. Descendants from a group of people who came here from Earth millions of years ago. People more advanced in science than we are today. Only through the years they lost their knowledge, reverted to the jungle. At least, that was your father's theory. Are they hostile? I'm not sure. They've seen the ship before, of course. Yes, they've seen it before. They know we come out of space. It's fantastic. Descendants of Earth people, it's, it's as fantastic as your Diamond Mountain. The Diamond Mountain is very real. Come. We have a long walk. How far up are we? About a thousand feet above ground level, I'd say. The air's thin. Shouldn't be this thin at only a thousand feet. Nevertheless, it is. I can hardly breathe. It won't get much worse. Stick it out. We should have brought oxygen masks. It's too hot. They'd be impractical. <laughs> That's right. Maybe it's the heat, not so much the thin air. I feel as though I'm being scorched up. Save your breath. Come on. All right. Come on. Oh, we've still got to climb. That's right. I feel like I can't. I can't go much further. Try. I. I can't. I, I, I... Sorry, Phil. You did better than I thought, as a matter of fact. Much better than your father. What? He collapsed about a hundred yards further back, but of course he was much older. Don't look so shocked. I don't understand. It is simple to understand. This is the place where I discovered I am not of an inferior race. Here in this place, I was your father's superior. Now I am your superior. 
I can live where you can die, where he died. You let him die? No, no, I didn't want him to die. I wanted to enjoy my sense of superiority. I carried him back, but it was too late. He was too weakened. I, I can't think properly. I, but I, I can. Your father wanted you to come here for the diamond. It was an easy promise for me to give him. I wanted to bring you here. I wanted to realize my superiority. It's crazy kind of talk. That's <laughs> crazy. You're like my brother. He was like your father. Oh, no, no. He was the great Paulo Santos. Perhaps the greatest explorer and ship designer of his day. He built our ship. He was the scientist supreme, superior man. And you're his natural son. Guido, look up there. I said, look up there. You can see the diamond peak. Some kind of rock. Crystal rock. No, no pure diamond. I have been up there. I chipped a piece off. I brought it back here to your father. He knew it was diamond. He lived just long enough to confirm that. I can reach the diamond, you see. But you can't. No one of your race could, but I can. I've got to get to lower ground. Not without my help. See? You're too weak to move. Uh, you must depend on me. You're crazy. Oh, no. I won't let you die. But I'll take away your sidearms. I can't have you armed. How does it feel, Guido? Feel? About superior man suddenly confronted by superiority of an inferior race. Uh, I've got to get to lower ground. A situation that reflects the law of the universe, Guido. Your father was always talking about that. Well, I don't want you to die. I want you to live so that you can serve me. I get you to lower ground. You know, hate has a very real place in life. We need it. Man is unique among the living things on this planet, and that he does have hate. Man hated the wolf. He hated the cave bear. He eliminated those species that were just not tolerable. Hate has a good side. Hate has a place. The difficulty is when the hate is misplaced, when it is generalized and not specialized to the pain point where it belongs to the thing that is really wrong. I'm afraid Phil misunderstood and had his hate directed in the wrong direction. It wasn't a race he hated. He just thought he did. What he hated was to have someone who was older and wiser than he himself. And now he had misplaced it to another guy who was trying to do a good job with him. You won't have any use for sidearms, so don't try to get them back. If you do, I'll kill you. What do you have in mind? I have a plan, but I'll need to have the help of the people here. You can't reach the diamond, but I can, and so can they. Our job is to get them to carry the drilling equipment up that hill so that I can start chipping the diamond. You think they'll work for you? <laughs> They're afraid of me. After your father died, they attacked, and I had to kill some of them with a blaster. That's why they don't show themselves now. It may take a little while, but I've got to make them understand that they must do what I want. Suppose you succeed. Well, when I leave here, I'll take away enough diamond to convert into enough cash that will make me just about the richest man on earth. Once I've done that... I... What about me? You. Won't I be an obstacle? No. You'll do away with me. Not here. I'll wait until we're out in space. Just like that. I'm afraid so. <laughs> it's funny, isn't oh, it? Oh, yes, yes. You identify yourself with what you call an inferior race and resent the people who made you our intellectual equal. Human nature. I should feel grateful instead, eh? Is that it? You've been shown nothing but kindness. Gratitude wouldn't be out of place. If you only knew how I hated that word. I know. Some people do. It makes them squirm. They cry for help. They get it and they hate you for it. I didn't cry for help. Yes. You were a child of four, abandoned in the jungle. You were crying when my father found you. You'd have died or been killed by some animal. Or survived and just been a savage. Now, now it's coming out. Everything you and your father felt about me. I'm sorry for you. You, you sorry for me. 
I hold the reins. No. No, history is full of people like you. The little upstarts with a lust for power and hatred. You never last long. The law of the universe never tolerates you. Law of the universe. You sound like your father. That's nice to know, Phil. By the way, we're being watched. I know that. You'd better let me have my side on it. Not a chance. You said these people were scared. They are. Not scared enough. That's another law of the universe and a lesson from history. People are never too scared to resist an invader. And we're invaders. They won't resist if I turn this blaster on them again. The ones you kill won't. I don't want to kill them. I want to talk to them. In what language? Sign language. What else? You can try. It may take weeks or months. Well, what happens in the meantime? We'll go back to the ship. There's open space there. Sooner or later, a few of them will approach us. Then I'll try to talk to them. Then we better start down, unless we're surrounded. I'll blast our way through if there's trouble. Come on. Keep ahead of me where I can see you. No trouble. You see? I'm sure I spotted a couple. Shadows. All right. We're about a quarter of a mile from the ship. Come on. Keep in front. Get down. A slingshot. A piece of rock. Yes, it hit this tree instead of one of us. A piece of rock. Here it is. A diamond the size of a small egg. Diamonds for ammunition. This planet must be crawling with diamonds. Keep down. Yeah. I blast them to kingdom come. I bet we're the first ones in history to be stoned with diamonds. Better pick them up. You pick them up. I could just see where those savages are. They're not too close. We can't stay here. Come on before they close in from all sides. You may not have time to shoot in all directions. All right. We push on. Get anything? No, but I've got a feeling they see us. The ship is pretty close now. <laughs> to use a gun once. Better keep quiet. You have a nasty cut on your head. We're going back to report to the World Council. Every country in the world has a stake in this matter. The Council will decide what to do about the diamonds, not us. Why didn't you leave me there? To them. Let's say two basic laws came into conflict. The law of the universe decreed your death. You're alive only because of the basic law of civilized human nature, compassion. You've still got to learn that, Phil. Nothing will change that. yourself and a lot of other people around you, mighty unhappy, if you try to have all values and be able to do everything, consider yourself uh, tops at anything around. None of us has that ability. We can't do it all. But each of us has his own special talents, his own individual abilities. And for these, every one of us is valuable. And every one of us needs every other one for that special individual talent. No, no individual is everything. The other guy's got something you need.
Heard in our cast tonight were Mason Adams and Donald Buker. The script was by John Fleming. Produced and directed by Sanford Marshall here in New York. This is Guy Wallace speaking. We pause now for station identification. <laughs> 